It was in the year 1976, same year as Apple was founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak and Ronald Wayne. Wait, isn't this supposed to be a Desikos video? Right, let's just fast forward to 2023. It was in the year 2023 where movies like iRobot or even Jarvis from Iron Man don't seem like a science fiction anymore. In case you're wondering how is all of this related to DevSecOps in cloud? Well, for the past few years, cloud has already been impacting DevSecOps and now for the past few months, in fact, four months, I think, Chat GPT and generative AI have taken over the world like a storm. So the definition of DevSecOps has evolved quite a bit when we talk about it in 2023. How you would run and function in a DevSecOps program has evolved quite a bit. And frankly speaking, there are already impacts of AI in the world of DevSecOps. So in this video, not just me, but a few experts in the cybersecurity space, we were all at RSA Conference 2023, which is one of the largest conference cybersecurity. We spoke about some of these challenges and what does it take to make a really good DevSecOps program where you can actually measure the success in 2023. For the past few years, and including 2022 and 2023, most of the DevSecOps conversation has focused primarily around the application security pipeline because it was driven by the fact that, hey, we're doing DevOps for applications, so we should find a way to do security in it. So DevSecOps kind of became an application security kind of domain, which kind of made sense if you were living in primarily a data center world. But now for the past few years, we've been talking about building applications in cloud, now especially with COVID accelerating the digital transformation projects, a lot more applications are built as microservices in the cloud infrastructure, which means a lot of the DevSecOps or a lot of integration of security in pipeline is also revolving on how do you do security in infrastructure as code? How do you do security in building applications where you may not have access to the application infrastructure at all to begin with? And of course, the infamous shared responsibility model where the cloud service provider has some responsibility and you, the person responsible for creating and managing the application has a responsibility. There's a bit of a gray area in between, but let's look at how people look at cloud. So the cloud is basically means I don't have to do all the infrastructure stuff anymore or I, at I guess that's what I thought at first. And then I ended up doing infrastructure as code and all these <laughs> other things when I started doing DevOps, yeah. right? But when it's code, I don't know how to explain this, but it makes more sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like I find it easier then yeah. because yeah. I have programmed more of my life than I have not programmed. And so in the cloud, you can do infrastructure as code. You can do it on-prem, but it, 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 it kind of, it doesn't go very well most of the time. The cloud is essentially, I don't bother anymore as an organization about the infrastructure level. Yeah. So I, the hyperscaler is taking care of that. And they are also taking care of the security in that aspect, right? Yeah. So for me as an organization, that means I need to focus on the application security side of the house. I, it helps me on the one hand side because I can sort of trust uh, that the hyperscaler gets his stuff with the infrastructure, right? And so I can focus more energy on the application security and that is the change in, in mindset and also tool set for the DevSecOps program then. I think cloud adoption has really pushed the need for DevSecOps or to integrate into the DevOps pipeline. Because you can get software written and produced and published so quickly now, yeah. with all the tooling that's out there and all of the microservices and open source and CI pipelines and constant deployment and just the ability to get a service online quickly. For the DevSecOps program, that means it needs to not slow down the, the gain in speed that I got by the cloud, so I need to adapt my security controls and the tools that I use. Looks like cloud has allowed us to code, build, and deploy faster, and security kind of needs to go as fast as they can as with the same speed as development, but how fast are we talking? I think just in cloud, you have the opportunity to really do it in one system mm. and in one flow of process, forget even system, one process, because the cloud by definition is code, yep, yep. right? Everything is code. So I yep. think in the cloud, you have an opportunity to actually tie things together. And yeah. the biggest difference is velocity, because yes. everything is a hundred times faster. You have a hundred times more people involved. They move a hundred times faster. The cloud secure, the cloud providers introduce a hundred times more services. Yeah. People use them a hundred times faster because it's easier to adopt. Yeah. Everything is automated. Everything is as code. So anyway, it's cloud security. It's everything security, just faster. Um, and so infrastructure as code really excited me because I could do all the same things like version control. I could scan it. I could add the code. I'm like, haha, I can add my own code. Um, so I really like that. And that's much easier in the cloud. You right. can also do a lot more automation in the cloud, like cloud events. And now think about ChatGPT and Copilot and all this stuff, it's fast. You write code faster. Open yeah. source made it even faster to write code. Then you became all these automation tools like Jenkins and, and all the rest of the stuff in the CI CD. Everything became automated. The more these things become automated, the easier it is yeah. to deploy code, to write code, deploy it, and to scale it. Cloud makes it very easy to scale it. The harder the problem becomes and the more you need it. 
So I think the need today is a hundred times than it was three years ago because security was not born to be automated. That right now, everything is going towards automation. Now that we understand how DevSecOps looks like in 2023, let's redefine what DevSecOps in 2023 should be called. DevSecOps framework in 2023 would be about utilizing the capabilities provided by your cloud service provider like infrastructure score, speed to deployment, and automation to allow for you to deploy security in your application pipeline infrastructure pipeline using cloud native capabilities and where possible maybe some AI as well. And using all of these capabilities means that you would be able to deploy faster while still being able to do security the same rate as well. Let's not forget feedback, which is probably the most important thing we can talk about from a DevSecOps perspective, because it's one thing to understand what DevSecOps framework is, but another to build one. Now that we have redefined and updated the definition for what DevSecOps in 2023 looks like in the cloud, let's also talk about how would you go about building a DevSecOps program? Bring your DevOps person into a room yep. a developer lead into a room and say guys i just want to listen i just want to learn how you guys deploy yeah what steps does a soft a piece of code go through because it already goes through steps right that's right Forget yeah, security yeah. it goes through testing and staging and all that stuff what what does that look like yeah if you don't map it you're gonna fail yeah. then you're gonna say okay here's the use cases i need to solve to i need to scan the code for problems like whatever secrets in code vulnerabilities in your dependencies open source whatever these things are what is the and you ask the, literally i would say you ask them say hey I need, for example, you write code and let's say that you forgot, you didn't, obviously you didn't do it on purpose, but you forgot a piece of uh, code that's an API secret, yeah. right? an API token. When is the best time for me to tell you that this happened? Yeah. You're going to hear the answer. It's when I write the code. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> so, much it. That's, that's right. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's going to hear. If I do this, when is the best place? And then you're going to be able to map for the five, six use cases in DevSecOps, which is scanning the code for known problems, right? Yeah. And then scanning the compiled code, sometimes containers of virtual machines. And then how do you report problems that you find in productions? You're going to be able to map real. By the way, sounds like maybe a complex exercise. It's not. But it was a really eye-opening moment where if I give them the right information in the right context at the right time, they actually want to do stuff with it. Yeah, yeah, OK. Generally, what I do is I ask about, OK, so what are the things that really matter to your organization? What are the main risks? Where are we trying to protect? How much is it worth to protect? So sometimes you're protecting human lives. Yeah. And so even though the financial value might be low, uh, I believe the risk is quite high. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, like you're trying to protect something that's worth a million dollars, you're not going to spend $10 million protecting it. Of course, yeah. Right? And so figuring out what matters to that organization and then figuring out what are the best activities you can do to detect those types of threats. Also, um, another important thing is what types of staff do you have? So if you have staff that have tons of security knowledge in cloud, awesome, yeah. right? But if you have almost no one that knows anything about AppSec, which happens a lot, it's like, how can we scale this program? How can we get this message across? So sometimes it might make sense that you give the developers tools, yeah. but sometimes that doesn't make sense if you have no one to support them with it. Yeah. And so you have to figure out like what that, what the organization could get the best bang for their buck out of. And sometimes people are like, oh, like I bought seven tools. What should I do next? I'm like, stop buying tools. Mm. Oh my gosh, fix those bugs. Let's definitely not buy tools as the first thing to build a DevSecOps program in 2023. Some of the components that would help you build a successful DevSecOps program in 2023 would be, first one, walk up to your DevOps team or developer team to understand how do they deploy code and also just to understand where are the places where if they were to have a problem in production for some reason, how would they go about and fix it? That allows you to see where security can be implemented in a way that it doesn't hinder with the day-to-day -day operation. Second, work with them to identify what are some of the crucial products for the application that you may be running or what are some of the crucial products and applications for the business itself that you may be trying to protect so that you identify which components or which applications make sense to be working as a priority for making sure that they don't get any bugs in their software development lifecycle in the production environment so you don't have to go all the way back into the development phase and fix it later on which is a lot more expensive exercise third once you've identified what the crucial products are or the applications are identify what the threats are and how likely at the impact would be of 
a threat being actually actionable for that product. So you can start building up security capabilities for specific threats that affect that crucial application. Now, you may find tools that are not always a solution for identifying threats and doing DevSecOps. DevSecOps is the culture. DevSecOps is how you make sure that security is part of the entire software development lifecycle when building the application. So when you go about talking about how to quickly fix security vulnerabilities in a software development cycle, so the business doesn't have to pay a lot more money because they found a problem much later, that's definitely a, I don't see which executive out there would say no to it. Now, last but not least is again, feedback. A lot of folks would have pen testing or bug bounty programs that they would run on the application in production. And what you find is, What's the quickest way to fix those vulnerabilities in a way that a not only did you solve it in the beginning before a developer goes down the path of even implementing it. So they're aware that, hey, these are vulnerabilities I should be avoiding putting in my code. B, how do you quickly resolve those vulnerabilities in a way that you are able to get a quick feedback loop so that it does not happen again in that particular part of the code? But also, if you're able to search across your entire code base for where else is this found and how can I quickly remove it as well? So those feedback elements are definitely quite crucial for you to build a successful DevSecOps program. Let me know in the comment below if you agree with how we are building a DevSecOps program in 2023 or would you add something or would you remove something? At this point in time, I'm compelled to tell you a chat GPT joke about developers and DevSecOps because that's what my script is saying. So I'm gonna have two jokes on the screen. The one that I like the most is this one. Why didn't the developer propose to DevSecOps because every time they got down on one knee, DevSecOps said, before we take the next step, let's review your vulnerability assessment. <laughs> Such a security thing to say. This was funny for me, but maybe not for developers out there. Apologies if any developers were offended in the making of this joke. Jokes apart, now you are at that stage where you know what's involved in building a DevSecOps program. You've identified the threat for critical applications. You even thought of a feedback process as well. But how do you know if it's successful? How do you know the success matrix of the DevSecOps program that you're running? Let me know in the comment below what your answer is. I guess you know mine. Yeah. The successful one is that you have these five, six points in the SDLC and the development lifecycle that you have tools deployed. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, what, yeah. what happens when they write a piece of code and they yeah. do a unit test and it fails? They fix it. That's right. They don't feel bad about it. If you build your security tools to fit the same lifecycle, that's the ideal DevSecOps, that people say, I didn't add another tool, it just added another type of test. So you are giving feedback as quickly as you can to developers, and you're receiving feedback and you're listening to it and paying attention. I hope you were paying attention because I could not explain feedback any better myself. I must add that now, since you know what the definition of DevSecOps in cloud is, what makes a successful DevSecOps program, there are certainly going to be challenges that you would face when implementing and managing DevSecOps program in your organization, which I may not be able to cover in this short video because I don't have all the answers, but thankfully we have ChatGPT for all the answers. I think generative AI is amazing and super powerful, and I have no doubt it will you know, greatly impact all worlds, including software, including, and it's sort of starting to show that. So it's tough. I think technology amplifies things. It amplifies the good and it amplifies the bad. I think for First, the whole AI and Copilot and ChatGPT is just at the beginning, obviously. I think we're just starting to see the revolution. But if you think about what's going to happen, I think everything that's going to contribute to speed, yeah. right, is going to impact security by definition. So if I, again, like I mentioned earlier, if I can write code faster, it's going to impact security. If I can deploy faster, it's going to impact security. If I can fix stuff faster, mm -hmm. it may do security better, right? Yeah. So if I can ask a question rather than go into a dashboard, think about this is the this is where the market is going for sure yeah. yeah but yeah it'll be a brave new world at the end of the day you know it'll come back to security hygiene it'll come back to like locking your doors and, uh, and your windows and, and sort of ensuring that these basics are well handled because again technology amplifies and so whatever flaw yeah. here it, the flaws wouldn't be very different but the more auto generated, the more you amplify the generation, the more you multiply the security risk. We are entering a brave new world. A world with AI will amplify the good and bad of application and software development and the good and bad of how we secure application and software in the world of cloud and AI. We will be developing and deploying faster. Security will have to keep up and integrate even more. That's why it's important to talk about DevSecOps in cloud in 2023. That's pretty much what we wanted to cover in the video. And I hope you continue to keep your AI responsible and jokes terrible. But if you like learning about 
about DevSecOps, cloud and cloud security. We talk about cloud security all day, every day. And if you know someone who's probably looking at implementing DevSecOps in the cloud or AI space, definitely share this video with them. If you have any commentary on what other videos you would like us to create on this topic, definitely leave us a comment. We'd love to create the video, but otherwise like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.